Hello, this is your friendly archaeologist Brian Hayden once again. So I'm talking to you from the rain coast of British Columbia, but it's a sunny day today. Yesterday lots of rain, but today good. So I'd like to talk today about uh, cave art. Uh, it's a fascinating topic and we're talking about some of the greatest art pieces in the world. So the uh, first cave art from the Ice Ages, dating back uh, 10 to 30,000 years ago plus, um, was discovered in 1879 by a small girl whose name was Maria Sautuola in, in northern Spain. And uh, she, her father owned the property for Altamira, the cave called Altamira. And he was a uh, amateur archeologist and she was exploring around. She said, Papa, there's animals in that cave, painted animals. And uh, so he recorded them and people didn't believe it at first. The archeologist thought it was all a hoax that uh, paintings that were that old couldn't, couldn't possibly be preserved. But as more and more of them were found, uh, people began to realize, no, that they were real, that uh, they were genuine. So uh, we're talking about some of these uh, cave paintings. I'll show you a few examples here. Uh, pretty remarkable scenes of horses. Uh, and you can see the high quality of the art. You might see the, uh, the darts that are uh, hitting the animals there, the, uh, the adaladal darts, long spears. And uh, let's see, we've got uh, another one that's a uh, mythical animal even, uh, like a unicorn, it's called the unicorn, but it's got two, two horns on it. So um, uh, there's, uh, let's see, one more here that I want to show you of a, a surf. Uh, it's uh, just a fabulous depiction of the, uh, the antlers. And uh, just one more real quick one to give you an idea of some of the, some of the um, detail that could be included. This is a bison. So uh, Maria, when she first saw them, she realized there were animals that were being portrayed there that just didn't exist in Europe at the time. There were uh, bison, there were uh, reindeer, there were also rhinoceroses, mammoths, all sorts of things that were obviously from long ago. So these have created a real conundrum for archaeologists and uh, everybody wants to know well, why in the world did they paint these animals uh, in the caves? Um, why did they develop the art to such an extent at such an early time? And so there have been lots and lots of theories about why that was done. Uh, one of them was for hunting magic. People thought that these were, you saw the, the darts hitting the animals. So that was a natural assumption, perhaps at the time. And then people thought it might be art for art's sake, just this creative drive in individuals to create art. Um, and then there were other suggestions that there might be uh, records of shamanistic uh, seances and or even some of the animals that were sort of their familiars or their protectors in the spirit realm. Uh, and then there were people that thought that these represented binary oppositions, one type of animal versus another, male versus female, day versus light, life versus death. Um, and so there were all sorts of those kinds of uh, interpretations about what these represented. Uh, also magic to increase animals um, and then some people thought they were family crests or others thought they were part of tribal initiations so and tribal lore. So there were lots and lots of um, ideas but there's really no consensus now as to what these, why people painted these and went far into the caves to to depict them. And so uh, for me, and I've done some work in the caves, I'll mention in a minute, um, some of the most remarkable, some of the most important aspects of these caves and the paintings is that they're far inside the caves. They're not near the entrance. People had to go a long way inside. Uh, they were made by trained specialists. Like, you know, this is not just doodling. This is, uh, 
exquisite art that only somebody with some training and practice could produce. Uh, there was a lot of effort involved to get into these caves. You had to plan for the lighting and because you were spending hours inside the caves and there was no electricity then. Um, and so you had to carry torches, but they did more. They made scaffolding to create some of these paintings. Um, they don't seem to have gone into the caves very frequently. So it was not like an annual thing or anything like that. Um, and then most of the animals, one of the most intriguing aspects, is that they are what I would call power animals. Uh, they're not the animals that were uh, hunted on a daily basis for food, uh, but rather they're very powerful animals like the aurochs, which is just as fierce as today's bulls, but 25% bigger. And, uh, and then there were the mammoths and then a lot of the um, bears as well. A lot of the cat family, the large cat family, lions and leopards, things like that. Um, and then also the, uh, the spaces where these occur are not very big. Uh, Suzanne Villeneuve and I uh, did a study inside the caves looking at the context, you know, how, how many people could fit in to the space where the, some of these were depicted. And s at least in some of the cases, uh, there was very little, very few people that could get into the space to look at them. Some of the most elaborate ones too. Um, and so this seems to indicate that there was a restricted number of people involved uh, and probably an exclusive uh, group as well. So from all these observations, I sort of came to the conclusion after studying about secret societies that, uh, and this is a new suggestion, that these caves were made by secret societies, painted by secret societies for secret society rituals. And that makes sense in terms of their being hidden uh, and out of the way, them being ritual locations. I think most people agree on that. Uh, that there is quite a bit of wealth involved to create this art uh, and that it has power animals and it's very exclusive. So as a result, that's one of the features uh, that I've tried to emphasize in the book I wrote on the Upper Paleolithic, The Eyes of the Leopard, The Adventures of Sev 20,000 years ago in the southwest of France. So uh, if you're interested in finding out more, uh, you might want to pick up a copy and uh, read through it. Okay, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.